So this week I'm down in Old Mexico, actually at the Rancho El Chaparral. This is outside of Hermosillo, Mexico, slap dab in the middle of the Sonora Desert. This will be my third time down here and I'm telling you what, first trip here, I was really stoked. And I mean, I'd heard about the Sonoran Desert Mule Deer and of course Rancho El Chaparral for a long, long time. And after a few days, I smoked what was my biggest mule deer buck ever. Oh, <laughs> need a wide angle lens for that dude right there. Look at that. So the second time I come to Rancho El Chaparral, I wound up and brought a friend with me. And on this particular trip, we did a spot and stalk hunt and I took a monster mule deer buck. Here he goes. Woo, that right there is a monster. So this time, well, I brought another friend. And what I'm back for is a good time. I'm Brad Hassig from Woodville, Texas. I grew up in the Rocky Mountains hunting mule deer and it's always been a dream of mine to come down here to Sonora and kill one of these big monster mule deer down here in the desert. Now I know we're gonna see a lot of big mule deer bucks. And the reason why is because they have managed this place like no other place on earth, seriously. My name is Abraham Garcia. I am an operating partner here at the ranch. So El Chaparral Ranch is composed of two hunting areas. The free range uh, encompasses around 60,000 acres and our high fence hunting area is around 6,000 acres. So we specialize in uh, desert mule deer and desert bighorn sheep. We're always chasing the record. So we, we try to set our goals high here at El Chaparral and just some great hunting and great trophies. Como se llama? Chava, nice to meet Chava. you. Chava, I'm Keith Warren. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, sir. Let's take a margarita. Thank you. Welcome. All right, I appreciate that. And folks, uh, this is paradise, especially paradise if you're a trophy mule deer hunter or a desert bighorn sheep hunter. Come on inside. I love this place and it's easy to see why. Not only are the accommodations first class, I mean, everybody, come on, come on, come on, you're good. They wait on your hand or foot. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And uh, you may be wondering, Mexico, is it safe? You doggone right, it's safe. I'll put it this way. When you come to the airport and you talk to them, they say, oh, you're going to El Chaparral? Yep, yep, you're good. It's safe. All right, so we mentioned that the biggest mule deer in the world are right down here, and I want to show you what is a giant. This is the biggest mule deer I've ever seen, and it's actually, from what I understand, y'all have video of this guy being taken. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's gonna take the all-time uh, number one SEI. I can't believe it, golly. I'm holding the biggest mule deer in the world right here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, so we got in, got all settled down, and uh, ate a quick lunch, and now it's time to just check zero on the rifle. Okay, going to go at 200 yards. Boom. Okay, good. All right, so if y'all are wondering, let me tell you about the rifle right quick. This is 6.5 Creedmoor, topped off with a 5x30 Pinnacle scope by Sightwork. Of course, I'm using the ammo ink. Ammo, the American Hunter ammo, and we're fixing to go for a mule deer right now. First thing we did, of course, was make sure and check zero, and then it was up on the high rack to start covering some country and glassing for a snoring desert mule deer. The way most people are gonna hunt out here is high racking at least, especially built vehicles with big racks up on top. And there's a reason why the country is vast. Also has a lot of thick brush. The only way you can see down in the brush is to get up high. We just stopped. There's a monster buck up there looking at us right now, and you can see how boxy his frame is. And you may be wondering, why in the world don't you shoot him, Keith Warren? Look at him. Look at his body. It's just not old. He's got big antlers, but he's got unbelievable genetics. 
And the reason why this place has got the muy grandes, because they don't shoot young guys like that. What a beast of a deer. You give him a couple more years and watch out, big boy. Pow! We're gonna put up a reconnex camera. That's the same thing that we wind up doing whitetail hunting, as you know. And we're gonna see what comes in here. Uh, literally, it takes the exact same things to grow trophy mule deer as it does to grow trophy whitetails. So we're gonna get this set up and go. Now, it's time for viewer feedback. Brought to you by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. All right, this one comes to me off of Facebook Messenger from a viewer by the name of Kenny. He says, when traveling to a foreign country to hunt, how do you know how to not have any problems taking a firearm? Uh, Kenny, that's real simple. Deal with a good outfitter and uh, do everything he says. Kenny, that's a good question. And if you all have a question for me, head on over to our website and hit the Connect with Keith tab. It is the third week of December and uh, the weather's cold. I mean, it's cold for the desert. You know, you look at this country and think early in the morning, it could be down to 40 degrees and the wind is howling. If you come on a hunt like this, you better have some good glasses with you. And the more eyes, the better, because there's so much country out here that you won't believe it. And somewhere in all this country, it's a big mule deer buck with my name on it. We just gotta find him. We just came around the corner and came across a really nice buck over here. I mean, he is bedded down. Kind of caught him with his pants down. He was off guard and he's just laying there. That just gives you an idea that is not what we came here for. But he's a nice deer, you gotta admit that. But that's kinda cool. So the key here is to cover as much country early as possible. Hoping to catch one out in the open. Whoa. That back one is the man, look at him. He's heavy. When given the choice, which one would you shoot, folks? The one in the back for sure. The one in the front, look at that. That's a classic Sonora buck right there. Wide. Look at that. Beautiful deer. Adios. You know, there's something addictive about coming down here for me. It's wild. It's like the way it was 200, 300 years ago. It's probably going to be like that, just like it is right now, 200, 300 years from now. He's a young guy. Oh, well, nice footage, though. Nice footage. You good, Johnny? Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's some kind of thick brush right there. Just be very still, okay? To me, hunting is what you make of it, period. It's all about the experience. And covering country like this is soaking it in, baby. Hmm, what an experience. So keeping your firearms clean and lubricated is important no matter where you are. And if you travel internationally, you travel anywhere on an airplane, you're gonna have an issue when you wind up carrying aerosol cans. It's for that reason they wind up using the CLP by Lucas. I'll wind up taking a spray bottle 
And the reason why is I pour the liquid into the spray bottle. I get a whole lot better coverage, in my opinion, by using a little spray bottle. Then I wipe the entire gun down. You know, when you're getting areas like this where it's really dusty, really dusty, if you use a heavy grade oil to lubricate and clean your rifle, the problem is it works like a magnet. Dust sticks to it, but it doesn't with the Lucas CLP. We're gonna get this thing cleaned up and head on out right now. So the guides out here, uh, there may be a little bit of a language barrier, but their eyes, they'll see a deer before you every single time. The one thing that never ceases to amaze me is the vision that these guides have down here. I mean, they can pick up something that literally I have yet to see a deer before the guides. Today I've got Beto guiding me, howdy. And, and it's like you've got ojos como un coyote. <laughs> He's got eyes like a coyote, man. He can see good. This is cold, isn't it? Yeah. It's cold. It's, like, it's the third week of December, and I'm telling you, you better wear lots of layers of clothes because you're gonna spend a lot of time on the top drive, and I mean, it's dang cold. There's a mule in the cactus, in the big cactus. How far? Uh, maybe 150 meters. This is gone. This is behind, this one. Yes, yes, yes. Apagalo, 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 apagalo. Turn, yeah, turn the truck off. Yeah. You see? Yeah, this is a big buck. Okay, he's, a, he's in a, the brooches. It's a big yeah. buck. No, 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 he's behind the bush there. Okay. Okay, he's coming out, he's coming out. I can't do it. He won't stop. Okay. He's gone. No, 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 no. Oh, there's a... Oh, down. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let me unload this. Grab the rest, let's go. We may go on over there though. Yeah. Are you see? I got him. I got him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's a stop. He's a stop no. on the other side of the brushes. No, no, no. He's in the brush. He's a stop. He's a no. Okay. no. I sing the horn no more. All I got's a headshot and I'm not doing it. Alright, stay on him. Stay on him. Stay on him. Just stay on him. Stay on him. He's gonna come out in that opening, I believe. Stay on him. John, you good? Yeah, I'm on him. But he's real covered up right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I know. Stay on. Are you there? Yes. Here it goes. That should bust him. He should be down. Congratulations, sir. Good it's a job. Beautiful animal. Good job. Good yeah. job. Look wow. at him. You can see he is. He's down in the brush. Look at that. You can see him from here. Yes, sir. Holy smokes. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, sir. Thank you. Let's go see what we got. Yes. Dead gum. That happened in a hurry. Oh, wow. Look at the size of this deer now. Wow, sir. Ooh, baby. Oh. Here. That's Hold on that, please. Wow. Look at this deer. My gosh. Check this guy out. <laughs> Look at the brow tines on him. Oh, my gosh. Awesome, sir. Now, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful yeah. buck. He's a four by four. A real nice four by four, but he's got, look at these brow tines. I mean, most mule deer do not have brow tines like that. And I mean, look at that shot placement. That, that it's is a perfect hole. shot, yes sir. Yeah, that's the exit hole. That's the American Hunter ammo. Moked him at 200 yards, and I mean, what a beautiful animal and a great hunt. Yes, Thank sir, you. congratulations. 
Beto, thank you again. No, so it's a pleasure. Thank you again. And folks, if y'all want more information on coming down here to the El Chaparral Ranch down in the Sonora Desert of Mexico, call my friend Abram Garcia and he can help you out. He's been helping me out for many, many years. I've known Abram for over 20 years and he's a good dude. And this is about as good a mule deer hunt as you could ever find. All right, so believe it or not, I mean, the hunt is young and Brad's down here, my buddy. And uh, anyway, we're gonna jump now and get the camera on with Brad and see if we can get him taking down a Mexico monster muley. So it's my turn and we're headed out in the high rack, do some glassing and uh, hopefully I get mine here. Back at it this morning. Beautiful morning. Sun coming up. This trip has been on my bucket list for many years. Never in my life have I seen the quality of deer that I have seen here the last few days. Another one behind him. He's not as wide as I don't know. Boy, he's big though. Where's he at? Oh, I got him. I got him. The sun is terrible. Oh, yeah. He makes a skyline. I'm going to take it. The sun is terrible. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, he's down, man. Awesome. Oh, that's a beautiful three by three. Good shot. Wonderful. Huge buck. I've been wanting to do this my whole life. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Beautiful, Thank, beautiful. You. Thank you. Thank nice you. I can't shot. wait to go retrieving. Let's go for it. I couldn't be more happy. Uh, the most unique three by three mule deer I've ever laid my eyes on and he's mine. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. What do you think about this? Oh, wonderful. Beautiful day. Beautiful. Really nice three by three. Awesome. Very long. He's heavy. What we've been looking for. Some character here. Yeah. Beautiful. Really dark horns. Beautiful brow time. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't ask for a better deer. This is what we come to Sonora for. Trip of a lifetime. I know there's a lot of destinations to go shoot mule deer, hunt mule deer, but I have never seen a place like this. The quality of the animals, the scenery, the beauty, the staff, everything. I will definitely be coming back here for another hunt next year. Salute. 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 This really is a resort where It'll change your life. You'll be proud to have come down here and, and hung out with Abram Garcia and get to see the what he and his partner have done on this 60,000 plus acre oasis for desert mule deer and desert bighorn sheep. You can't beat coming down here to Rancho El Chaparral. Give my friend Abram Garcia a call. He'll talk to you and he'll take care of everything. So as an uh, operating partner, uh, give me a call. I'm going to be the one that's going to be receiving your call or your email. I would love to talk mule deer or desert bighorn sheep with you and let's get you set up on a, on a great hunt. I, I believe you will truly enjoy it. Even if a hunter doesn't speak your own language, hunters speak the same language because we all celebrate the hunt, we celebrate the animals, and we celebrate life. And that's the way we do it on the high road. And we'll see you next week. Taxidermy work for the High Road Group is provided by Conroe Taxidermy, Conroe, Texas.